to The Hypnotist, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. Brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs, and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. So, get yourself comfortable and enjoy today's episode of The Hypnotist. Uh, episode. Hi, it's Adam here, and in this episode of The Hypnotist, you're going to hear me working with a lady that felt that the moment that she started to become successful, started to actually get her life in order, that she would sabotage it. Um, that, to use her language, something was holding her back. So, in this particular session, you're going to hear um, me working with her to basically get to the root cause of that self-sabotage to enable her to actually pursue the kind of things that she wanted to in life without this feeling that that she had to kind of revert back to this kind of issue. There's lots of metaphors in here, lots of very powerful hypnotic suggestions. So this is going to be really useful if you feel that you sabotage yourself. If something is holding you back, this is going to be a great session. Um, hypnotically, the language is very open, very ambiguous. So although there's a few details that relate to her specific situation and her life, it's still going to be very useful for anyone um, that wants to increase their ability to be successful, pursue their goals without sabotaging themselves or without something holding them back. Um, there'll be a minute or so worth of relaxing music and uh, find a place where it's comfortable, you won't be disturbed, ideally listen on headphones, and just enjoy this session.
Okay, so I want you to take a nice deep breath in. And then on the out breath, just relax those eyelids and relax those shoulders. Completely closing your eyes, that's right. And as you breathe in, breathing in a sense of relaxation, positivity. And as you breathe out, just imagine you're releasing any tension, anything not necessary right now. Breathing in anything feeling resourceful, relaxation, tranquility, a feeling of resourcefulness. And as you breathe out, just imagine you're breathing out any tension, any stress, any anxiety. With each and every breath, you're feeling deeper and deeper relaxed. That's right. And I want you to imagine that you are in picturesque nature. I want you to imagine that you are in a sunny spot at the foot of a mountain. I want you to use the power of your imagination to imagine a tall, large mountain. You can see it, but you're at the foot of that mountain. Blue skies, good weather. And I want you to imagine that there is the most comfortable bed, sofa or chair in this nature at the foot of this mountain. And if you can imagine what the most comfortable chair or sofa would look like, just let me know by nodding your head. And that's right. And I want you to imagine that you're making yourself comfortable on this piece of furniture, positioning your body in whichever way would enable you to feel the most relaxed you can possibly feel. As you breathe in, I want you to imagine you're breathing in a sense of relaxation and calm, and you're breathing out any tension, any anxiety. You already know that sunlight is one of the few things that can give your body vitamins. You know that you can eat food that gives you vitamins, but sunlight can also give your body an essential vitamin called vitamin D. And isn't it crazy how the body can take a nutrient from sunshine and distribute that to whatever parts of your body needs it? I want you to imagine as you're comfortably lying or sat there on this very comfortable piece of furniture, not only are you breathing in relaxation, but you're imagining that you're absorbing this relaxation from the sunshine. I want you to focus on the tiny muscles in your eyes and just feel that as you breathe in and allow the sunshine to bathe your face, that the muscles in and around your eyes and your cheeks are just relaxing, releasing any tension. Now that's it. Going deeper and deeper relaxed. Allowing that relaxation to spread in your neck and your shoulders. As you're lying there on that comfortable piece of furniture, Perhaps seeing this incredible picturesque mountain in front of you. Feeling deeper and deeper relaxed, allowing that relaxation to just melt away any and all tension around your neck and around your shoulders. Allowing the relaxation to go all the way down your arms, all the way down to the tips of your fingers, maybe feeling a tingling sensation. As you breathe in, imagine that feeling of relaxation and calm filling your lungs. So it's not just muscles that are relaxing, but even internal organs, your lungs are relaxing, your heart is relaxing. All these different parts of your body are relaxing and releasing that tension. Allow that feeling of relaxation to now pass into your gut. And any feelings of anxiety or unsettledness also start to release and relax. That's right, allowing that relaxation to spread all the way down to the very tips of your toes. A warm, fuzzy, comfortable feeling. That cozy feeling, isn't it strange how, just as you're about to wake up, you feel more relaxed than just before going to sleep. It's easier to sleep in the morning than it is at night sometimes. And I want you to reconnect with that feeling of what it feels like to feel so relaxed you just want to sleep. I'm going to count down from five to one and I want you to imagine what it would be like to fall asleep on that comfortable chair or sofa 
five, just feeling like you have the desire to yawn. Four, taking a deep breath in. Three, feeling that heaviness in your eyelids. And then two and then one, just falling asleep on that piece of furniture. And then I want you to imagine that you've fallen asleep and you're now in a dream, seeing yourself asleep on that piece of furniture, maybe a chair, a sofa or a bed. But there's something unique. You're standing there, seeing yourself at the foot of a mountain, completely asleep. But there's two things which are unique. The first is that you're holding two large bags, empty bags. And the second is that there is rope around your waist attached to a large heavy rock. You've got these empty bags and you've got this rock attached behind you. Now that mountain in front of you represents success for you. It will require effort it will require risks. It will require the ability to learn certain things and take on a challenge. It also won't happen immediately. It will take time and effort and persistence and tenacity. And as you look at that mountain, you become very aware that holding these empty bags is not a useful thing to climb a mountain. It's also the case that you can't even move towards the mountain while there is rope attaching you to a heavy rock behind you. Now the first thing to do is to allow your unconscious mind to think about not what that rock represents, but just that it represents anything holding you back. It doesn't matter if it's your past. It doesn't matter if it's a belief just know that it represents something stopping you from pursuing success. And if your unconscious mind accepts that the rock represents something holding you back, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Now you have a choice. You can either accept that it's impossible to climb the mountain while these things are holding you back, or you can choose to cut the rope and start making progress to climb that mountain. But in doing so, it means that you have to leave behind anything that's been holding you back. I want you to look at the rope and realize that even though the rope is thick, it can be cut. And I want you to notice that you have tools nearby to cut that rope. Maybe it's a saw, maybe it's a knife. And at the point where you are happy to leave whatever's holding you back in the past, you will be able to know that your unconscious mind is happy to do that because you will do whatever is necessary to cut the rope. And when you have cut the rope, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Now cutting the rope doesn't mean you've suddenly teleported to the top of the mountain and you're instantly successful, but it does mean that you can start making progress. And I want you to feel that you're able to walk away from that rock you're able to go out of your comfort zone. You're able to go beyond boundaries that were normally limited. In the same way that if a dog is chained to a kennel, there's a certain perimeter that they can go only as far and they can't go anymore. And I want you to feel that that's how it's been like for you. You've been able to reach a certain point, but only as far as the rope has allowed you to go. But now that you've cut that rope, you can go as far as you want to go because you have now broken the connection between what was holding you back and where you want to go. But there's something else that we need to let go of. 
because sometimes it's not something that holds us back, but sometimes it's something that impedes our progress. And I want you to see those two large bags, one in each hand. I want you to look up at the mountain, see the difficult terrain, see that perhaps there's trees and nature at the bottom, and then as it gets higher, there might be rocks, and then as it gets higher still, there might even be snow. And I want you to think, how is it possible for you to climb this mountain while in each hand there is a bag? You can certainly make progress and you can start walking, but as you get further on, it's gonna be challenging to climb a rock face while there's bags in each hand. But at the moment, the bags are light, they are empty. But we're gonna change that. And I want you to imagine that you're scanning your body for any hurt. It doesn't matter if this is recent feeling of hurt or a feeling of hurt that you still carry around with you that may have happened decades ago. But if you scan your whole body for any feelings of pain or hurt, I want you to locate the very location where it exists in you. And if you can feel any pain, any hurt, this is emotional pain rather than physical pain, but physical pain that is no longer useful for you can also be moved from you into the bags and notice that the bags start to feel heavier. I want you to scan your body for any anger. Now you might not find any, but you might find some anger or maybe a distant cousin of anger, frustration. Scan your body for any frustrations or anger and any that you find, become aware of it, aware of the location, and then move it from you into the bags and feel that the bags are getting heavier. I want you to scan your body for any feelings of regret. There's normally two key regrets things that we've done that we wish we hadn't and things that we haven't done that we wish we did. I want you to scan your body for any of those feelings of regret and if you find any, psychologically just move it from inside your body to the bags that you're holding in each hand. Notice the bags are getting heavier and heavier. Any sadness, scan your body, move it from your body into the bags. Any guilt. As you scan your body, move the guilt from you into the bags and notice that these bags are getting heavier and heavier. I want you to scan your body for any feeling of doubt or uncertainty. I want you to scan your body for any beliefs that might be holding you back. Scan your body for any limitations that are not real, just perceptions. And as you scan your body for all of these things, I want you to scan your body for anything else that is getting in the way of you living your life to the level you would like to live your life. Scan your body for those things and just know that any of those sensations, feelings, obstacles are moving from you into the bags and now if the bags are feeling heavy, one in each hand, just let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And I want you to look up at that mountain and then look down at those heavy bags, one in each hand. And I want you to think, how easy is it gonna be to climb that mountain that represents success and whatever success means to you while you're holding on to this baggage And if you decide that in order to pursue the successful future that you want, perhaps it would be a good idea to learn any lessons from what's happened without the need to carry that baggage into your present and your future. And if you decide that baggage is best left in the past, let me know by nodding your head. 
that's right. I'm going to count down from five to one. I want you to imagine that when I arrive at one, you will let go of each bag and you will feel lighter because that weight of the bags you're no longer carrying. Five, feeling the weight of those bags. Four, three, two, one, let go of the bags. Feel that lightness. Take five steps forward. One, two, three, four, five. Turn around and see those heavy bags. And know that you could have been attempting to climb mountains while carrying those bags. And just realize that that really is not a good idea. But what we've left behind in emotional baggage, we can replace with a feeling of all the resources that would be useful. Optimism. Tenacity, persistence, self-belief, motivation, drive, but most importantly, a feeling of being bold, that courage. I want you to scan your body for courage and I want you to amplify that feeling. Courage is knowing that you're about to embark on something difficult, scary, tricky, but you're still willing to do it anyway, trusting yourself that you will learn from whatever happens, believing in yourself enough to make progress. I want you to amplify and exaggerate all those feelings of resources. And when you feel that what you've lost in emotional baggage, you've replaced with a feeling of resourcefulness, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And now it's time. It's time to start walking up that mountain, knowing that that mountain represents whatever is most important to you and your future. But in hypnosis, time has no meaning. In the same way that in a dream, a day can be a minute, a week can be a few minutes. So as you start to climb up the mountain, just know that progress is progress. Sometimes there'll be a few obstacles, setbacks, routes that you attempt that don't quite work. But you don't treat that as failure, you treat that as learning what hasn't worked and you try a different approach, feeling that inner tenacity get even more amplified. Notice that there are different phases of this journey. There's the scenic, slow gradient at the foot of the mountain where you're still climbing upwards, but there are trees and there are flowers and there are nature. But as you pass through that, it gets slightly more challenging, steeper, more rocky. As you continue to make progress, it then starts to get colder, more challenging. You need to trust yourself even more than before because you're now in an unfamiliar environment. About halfway up the mountain, something interesting happens. There's a a clearing And as you're climbing up the mountain, I want you to notice that someone else is climbing down the mountain. I want you to see an older version of you. Maybe someone in their 60s or 70s or even 80s. Someone that has already climbed the very mountain that you want to climb. In this clearing, I want you to make eye contact with this representation of your future, the future that has already made it. The future that knows for a fact that it's possible because they've done it. I want you to embrace them with a hug. And then I want you to allow them to impart their wisdom and their experience, their insights with you. I want you to hear them say that you do deserve success, that you need to trust yourself more, that you need to leave your limitations and obstacles behind, because while they've been protecting you from danger, they've also been preventing you from having the freedom to pursue your goals and ambitions. This older version of you is not just giving you information. I want you to imagine that this older version of you, this older lady, 
is also giving you something that you crucially need. Maybe this is represented by a ball of energy or just a feeling of warmth. But this older version of you that has already experienced the success that you crave is now giving you the very resource that you need most. Only you will know what resource you need more than anything else right now. And as you accept that gift from that older version of you, you feel that vibrate, resonate, and ripple throughout every part of your unconscious mind. That it's not just an intellectual theory of what you need, but you are integrating and embracing that resource, making it part of you. And if your unconscious mind has accepted the resource that you need most, more than anything else, in order for you to pursue the future that you crave most, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And then you say goodbye to this older version of you, this wise old lady that's experienced and succeeded in the way that you would want to. And you can tell from her facial expressions, her posture. There is no doubt. There is no question as to whether or not she deserved her success. She earned her success. She deserved everything that she experienced. And likewise, so will you. Because the success to the level that you want is not easy. It took time to get this far up the mountain but there are more levels to go. And the fact that it's tricky, difficult, maybe you experience setbacks on the way, means that when you do experience the success, it's because it was earned. And if your unconscious mind accepts that success that is worth pursuing is always earned, never given, me know by nodding your head. That's right. And now it's time to continue making progress. The older version of you is on her descent down. She's achieved the success that she wants. Now she just wants the relaxation of the warm weather at the foot of the mountain. But for you, you've not achieved the pinnacle of your success yet. And therefore, Adventure and challenge is more appealing than comfort and relaxation. Which is why you're making the choice. Because you could choose to follow the older lady down the mountain where it's safe and calm and easy. Or you could choose to take on bigger challenges, tougher challenges, knowing that it won't be easy, but it will be worthwhile knowing that it will test you, bringing out even more qualities and characteristics, feelings of resources. Because most people don't realize what they're capable of until they're tested. They don't know how resourceful they are until they need to be resourceful. And by pursuing the bigger challenge, you're saying that you have confidence in yourself to get better you believe in yourself and as you make that intellectual thought you continue walking and climbing up the mountain even though it's uncomfortable it is cold wet rainy dangerous at some levels but you trust your ability to persist and persist you do I want you to keep on doing that until you arrive at the peak, at the pinnacle of this particular mountain. I want you to get a feeling of accomplishment, a sensation of pride. And as you embrace how good it feels to be successful, 
you realize that the problems that you solved along the way equip you for other challenges in the future. And as you get that feeling, that feeling of accomplishment and success, you also, off in the distance, see the peak of an even bigger mountain. And isn't it strange how when you've had a taste of the success that you want, you crave an even bigger challenge. It occurs to you. The older version of you wasn't going down the mountain to relax and seek the comfort of the warmer weather. The older version of you was going down the mountain so that she could pursue an even bigger mountain. You have all the resources necessary to not only be successful, but to crave levels more of success. There is no finish line. There are just challenges, challenges that give you problems, problems that teach you lessons, and a character that evolves over time. If your unconscious mind accepts that success is not a finish line, but a journey, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. You've already climbed many mountains in your life and there's many more to climb. As you look out the fantastic scenery around you from the top of a mountain you can see so much more notice that from such a high up position you can see many mountains bigger more challenging mountains but all these mountains were only possible because you chose to cut that rope from what was holding you back and you let go of that baggage that was getting in the way. All parts will now work together as a team in harmony to enable you to pursue those worthy challenges that motivate you most. I want you to imagine that it's now time to walk down that mountain. And when you get halfway down the mountain, it's interesting that you see a younger version of you climbing up the mountain. You share your wisdom, share your resources. But isn't it interesting that one of the key bits of information that you share is that you deserve this. That success is earned, not given. As you go down to the foot of the mountain, eager to take on new challenges just know that you have the capacity to do that you can see those old bags that are left there still on the floor knowing that you wouldn't have been able to climb that mountain had you held on to that emotional baggage that you've let go of you can see a rock there a large rock with rope still attached and you know for certain that you wouldn't have been able to climb the mountain had you kept holding on to that rope that was attaching you to it. Now you can choose if you want to tie that rope back around your waist because it is comfortable down there. There are no challenges or risks. It's safe, but not exciting. And you can choose to pick up those bags if you wish well, you can choose to leave the emotional baggage in the past where it belongs, learning all the lessons necessary from it. And if you decide that you want to leave that emotional baggage in the past and choose not to reattach yourself to that rock that was holding you back all this time, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. Isn't it strange as you look around, you can see someone that looks exactly like you on a very comfortable piece of furniture, maybe a chair, a sofa or a bed, looking so relaxed they're fast asleep. 
And sleep is one of those things that's so important to take on challenges. You need to allow your body to rest, recuperate, and all parts of your conscious and subconscious will allow you to just enjoy sleep. Because by enjoying sleep, it gives you the energy to pursue your challenges and goals the very next morning. I want you to imagine climbing into that version of you, fast asleep on that furniture, feeling how good it feels to feel so refreshed and relaxed that your body and mind is regenerating from that pleasurable, enjoyable sleep. I want you to imagine that in a few moments time, I'm going to count from one to 10 to awaken you, but you will awaken with a crucial distinction. You will awaken still having let go of that emotional baggage and still having disconnected that rope that was holding you back. You will awaken full of resourcefulness, wisdom, courage, and insight. You will awaken with all parts working in harmony to enable you to pursue the future, the successful future that you will earn and deserve. Starting to count to awaken you. With all parts fully awakened in this moment, at this time, fully integrated, helping you make progress in the future you desire. Starting to count. Now, one, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. Thank you for listening to The Hypnotist with Adam Cox, the show that gives you inside access to cutting-edge hypnosis with real clients facing genuine issues. To automatically receive the latest episodes, please subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, please share this episode with just one friend you think it could help. And if this episode helped you, please leave us a five-star review.